Hey guys, welcome to today's session on algebra. And we're going to get into a bit of translations by looking at some uh, questions here we have on screen. So, first of all, translations, when you hear the word, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, English to a different language, uh, Spanish to French, you know, you're translating. And essentially, math is a language. And uh, when you have words, like you can see on screen here, we have, this is a, this is a sentence, except it's missing the full stop there. Uh, but that's a sentence, you know, um, it consists of words, a combination of words. And the topic, algebraic translation, deals with changing words into, uh, we're going to change words into uh, expressions or algebraic expressions rather, into a more concise mathematical way where we don't have so many words. So that's what translations is all about. Um, now, when you're doing translations, there's keywords you need to look for. Uh, for example, in this first question, we have P being decreased by uh, the total of the total of Q and R. So when you read a question like that and they want you to translate that sentence into a mathematical expression, you need to look out for those keywords. And uh, the total, this part here, the total of Q and R, when I read it, I am thinking that the total of Q and R is represented by Q plus R. So I can translate that from words into a mathematical statement here, expression. And then they're saying that what they're going to do is say P decreased by. So P is apparently the bigger one and it's being decreased by. So we can have P subtract. And because this was a calculation that was done uh, together as one unit, we will place it within brackets. So if you were to translate this sentence, it should look like that. Now, of course, this is not a capital P, so I'll write it, uh, this is a common P, keeping uh, form with what the question has given us. Remember, variables, capitals, and commons are different, so use exactly what the question has given you. Uh, looking at the second example, they are saying three keyword less than the sum of X and Y. So the sum of X and Y could be represented as X plus Y. And then they're saying three less than that, three less than this, we could be represented by simply subtracting three from the sum of those two uh, values there. Part C, uh, they're saying C is being added to the square of B. So you need to know what uh, the square of B looks like. So we're gonna add two values here. We're gonna add C to the square of B. And the square of B simply is B squared or B to the power of two. Uh, we're going on to question four. In question four, you can see one of the keywords is uh, the word sum. They're asking us for the sum of M and N. So that signals us to add M and N together. This was a very easy one. Um, moving forward, we see keywords such as twice and minus. So let's think about what we're going to do here. They want us twice means two times something. So two times what? Uh, two times uh, twice of P minus Q. Now P minus Q looks like this. And twice that, uh, I would have to contain this in brackets. I know some of you might be wondering why. Well, it's because we have two uh, operations taking place, so we need to use brackets to identify which uh, letters are being linked closely together first. Uh, they said P uh, minus Q, so that's considered to be, um, they are linked, those letters P and Q are linked, so I'm containing them within brackets. And then, whatever the result of that is, they're saying to find twice that value. Another way of writing this is to leave out that multiplication sign, and you could have gotten uh, this. Um, next question, uh, it looks a, a bit longer than the others, uh, but nonetheless, <laughs> let's go ahead. 
So they say subtract the product of what? We're going to subtract the product of some things. Subtract the product of X and Y. So we are going to find the product of X and Y is simply X multiplied by Y. And you all know X multiplied by Y is XY. And they want us to subtract this from 58. So 58. So XY, the product of X and Y is being subtracted from 58. Uh, number seven, they want us to find the ratio of V to W. That will be simply rewritten as V on W because you all know when you're writing ratios, uh, V to W would be written as this in a ratio. And you can safely rewrite it as V over W as a fraction. So the keyword there was ratio. Um, moving on to question eight, five times G. So five times G, that's five G. Reduced is another keyword that highlights something with the subtraction sign. So five times G being reduced by the square of H. Now you all know the square of H is eight squared. So therefore that answer simply works out to be equal to five G minus H squared. Moving on here. In our worksheet, they are saying to find the product of P, Q, and R. The product of P, Q, and R is simply P multiplied by Q multiplied by R. And this can also be rewritten without those multiplication signs as P, Q, R. And our last question, they're saying 6 is being subtracted from. From means that whatever is written after the word is larger. So 6 is subtracted from. So therefore, we are going to subtract 6 from something that's way bigger. And what is it? Uh, subtracted from the sum of x. So that's x plus the sum of x and 2 times y. 2 times y can be written as 2y. So in brackets, because we have a huge operation being taken place between x and 2y, uh, we are going to make sure to contain that in brackets. And they are saying at the end of the day, you are going to have to subtract 6 from this. So guys, this is how algebra, um, algebraic expression works. It requires uh, highlighting those key uh, words that mean something mathematical. And if it's difficult for you sometimes to decide, do I write something first? Do I write it second? Always just start with a clear canvas. Start writing down stuff on your paper. And then when you look at your answer, read over your sentence and see if your answer makes sense. For example, uh, in the question number seven, they said the ratio of V to W. If you accidentally wrote W over V, and you were to write that in the ratio form and you read your question. Your question says the ratio of V to W, but then your answer is clearly showing that you have the ratio of W to V. So after you get an answer, it's always worth the effort to read back your sentence and see if your answer makes sense. Uh, and then you will uh, identify very easily where you have to perhaps switch around your uh, first and second too. So I hope this uh, tutorial was helpful for you guys. If you need to see some more questions on this, please be sure to comment down below and I will do more tutorials on this topic. Thank you for watching and I wish you guys all the best. Take care. Bye.